Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Dr. Derek Silva. I'm the chairman of the planning committee at AMMG, the Age Management Medicine Group. We are at the Bellagio here in Las Vegas, November 2015. Part of our faculty, Dr. Gary Donovitz, is joining me today. Dr. Donovitz, thank you so much, by the way, for spending some time with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. So, tell me a little bit about you, what you do. So I'm an OBGYN by trade, been doing that for over 30 years, been doing hormone replacement therapy for those 30 years and bioidenticals for 20 years. I started the Institute for Hormonal Balance in Texas and since then have developed BioT Medical, which is a company which teaches physicians how to do hormone replacement, how to do hormone optimization. Have you seen an evolution over the past, in your career, 5, 10, 15 years on the use of hormones? Oh, it's completely changed. You know, in the past, hormones were, were used by most women, then the WHI came out, and then all of a sudden physicians and women and everybody really stopped taking hormones because of the fear of breast cancer, heart disease, blood clots. So really what happened, there was a big surge in hormones, then a big fall off in hormones, and we've seen the repercussions of that. What are some of the repercussions of that? Well, women were dying just because they weren't getting their hormones. There was an increased risk in cardiovascular disease, an increased risk for diabetes. These people were not feeling well. So quality of life went down, health care went down for those women, and really nobody was helping them. And it's been a number of years before now finally people are realizing the benefits of hormones and they need their hormones. We're talking about women, we're talking about men, correct? We're not just talking about women. Correct. So men on the... Testosterone's been around for a long time. I mean, 80 years testosterone's been around. But right now, people are finally realizing testosterone therapy in both men and women could reduce cardiovascular disease, can reduce Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, osteoporosis. The health benefits of testosterone alone are massive. And so that's what we've learned. And now people are saying, how do I get this therapy? Because nobody's been talking about it. Well, delivery systems, you know, there's various ways to do this. There's, there are creams and injections. You're talking about something called pellets. What is the difference? Right, so we use pellet therapy, and just to digress a little bit, oral therapy, which has been used for years, Primrune and Primpro, synthetic hormones, really are a problem because they do increase blood clots, heart attacks, stroke. It's not so good. And synthetic hormones are not good for the brain. They're not good for the heart. They're not good for the breast. So, and in men, synthetic injectables, they increase platelet aggregation. They can actually do more damage than good. Pellet therapy is nice. One, you get bioidentical hormone. That meaning the testosterone that's in the pellet is the same as what the testicle or the ovary was making. So the hormone you're getting is the same hormone you're used to getting, and you can optimize it. Meaning you can put those people in the right level, no matter their age, no matter their weight. So really for us, pellet therapy, which you can do two or three times a year, is really hassle-free, very low side effects, and the benefits outweigh the risk, which you can't say about any other delivery method. What do you say to physicians? What do you say to people in general? I guess you know, this is more for physicians, also for consumers, what we're talking about today. But what do you tell people when it comes to getting over the fear of hormones? Now, you know, the fear really has come from physicians who don't know, and people who don't know about anything are going to be down on it, I always say. Or it comes from the media who has made assumptions that things in the past relate to the present. And they really love to drive home the fact that hormones are dangerous. But what if they weren't dangerous? What if they were beneficial? So patients get a really a mixed message. Now patients are very interested in their own health care. So they're going to check it out and they say, well, wait a minute, if there was a hormone that's just like the hormone I've been making, if there was a hormone that could make me feel better and improve my quality of life as I continue to age, because women are going to live 30 years, men are going to live 30 years past menopause and andropause, we've got to do something to improve their quality of life. We've got to do something to reduce cardiovascular disease. We've got to do something to reduce cancer. How are we going to do that? We're going to do it with hormone optimization. And now the patients are motivated because they're like, wow, if I could just get my hormones delivered in a hassle-free way, where I don't have to rub a cream on twice a day, where I don't have to stick myself with shots, I could just do it twice a year and get the benefits, I'm in. So how do we, you know, how do we move to the next step of education? Because this is an educational process, right? That's correct. And really, AMMG, I think, has really taken the lead 
um, in, in terms of what we're going to be able to do for healthcare versus disease management because everyone else is really falling behind. ACOG, for instance, has not changed their position statement in years. They still think that synthetic hormones are the same as bioidentical hormones. Well, why do they? I don't understand that. If how does the word synthetic? and bioidentical, don't they have different dictionary meanings? Do they have different <laughs> meanings, and why would you think that you would do just as well with horse estrogen, which really has more estrone in it, which is worse for the brain, worse for the breast, worse for the heart, why would you think that is the same as taking the same hormone that your body was making? They're not thinking about the receptors, and the interesting thing is the literature continues to advance, meaning we have great studies on all different organs in the body, and now the receptor theory that's really helped us understand why certain hormones are better than others, and yet ACOG, NAMS, Endocrine Society, they are falling behind. It's a big problem because those people who follow them say, why aren't you on board? How come you don't believe in it? And the answer is they do not know. They are not looking at the literature. ACOG should be a champion for women, and they're not. The endocrine society should be a champion for men understanding that they need thyroid. They gotta look at the right thyroid test. They need pellet therapy, or at least something to get their testosterone level in an optimal uh, state. Why they're falling behind, I don't know, other than the fact that they're not reading the literature, but it's a disservice to men and women everywhere. How do people, what kind of feedback do you get from your patients? It's amazing. When I used to use creams and shots and pills, because that's all we had, patients were okay. They felt a little bit better than they did with nothing. These patients on pellet therapy, it is life-changing. And that's what they say. Thank you. You changed my life. You changed my marriage. You changed my job. You gave me my life back. That's an amazing thing. So it's made healthcare or my delivery of healthcare or my life as a physician different for everything. It's much happier to be a physician when patients appreciate what you're doing and you're changing lives. One other thing I want to speak with you about is something very interesting that you're doing with, with the veterans. Traumatic brain injury, these guys come back from, from the Middle East. You've started a program, a study that is going on. Could you just tell us a little bit about that? Right, we're doing a PTSD study because the patients who, uh, the men and women for that matter, that have post-traumatic stress disorder that come back from the military, while they are in the military, when they really don't need the testosterone, the government was paying for the testosterone. They come back and now their hormone levels have fallen off. Most people with PTSD have low testosterone. And it's a big problem because they're getting managed with symptom relief, not really getting rid of the problem. So they're getting antidepressants, they're getting narcotics, they're getting all these drugs, but they can't function. Most of them are disabled. We are optimizing their testosterone and giving their life back. It improves their family life, it improves their work life. They can go back to work, they can take care of their kids. What a benefit to get your life back when you're 28 years old and you thought your life was over. And we are paying for it. So BioT is covering the cost and we're hoping that the federal government will step up and go, you know what, you got three Purple Hearts. You did four tours. Everything was great and we want to help you in your future and we're going to cover your hormones. Why pay for their drugs when you could pay for their hormones and get them off their drugs? So for us, it's been just a, a godsend, really. What have you seen with that, by the way? We're seeing huge benefits. When we look at the post the PTSD questionnaire, the symptoms that they are having are all shifting to the left, meaning their symptoms are getting better. They're able to get out and function in society. They can exercise again. Depression is going down. They sleep better. Moreover, they don't have these vivid dreams of bombs going off and people dying. And so actually, for their home life and their kids and their wife, it's also a godsend. Well, you're doing some amazing things. You've been a pioneer, you've been a leader. Now you're taking on this whole new venture, helping the veterans. Thank you so much for joining us. And by the way, thank you so much for being part of our faculty. Oh, I love being here. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. And folks, thank you very much for spending some time with us today. I'm Dr. Derek DeSilva. Until next time, may you always be blessed with good health.